In this tutorial you will learn how to build the most commonly used brushed metal shaders. We will first use bump maps for basic surface imperfections, then learn why using the built-in shader anisotrophy is superior, and finally develop a hybrid workflow to get the best of both. So brush shaders are defined by scratches or micro scratches which are placed along the surface in a certain way and by this way they also create certain kind of effects in our highlights. So in this example here I built two different kind of shaders and those are also the most commonly used shaders in my opinion for brushed metallic surfaces. One you can see here on those colorful cylinder objects where the scratches are wrapping around the curvature of our object. And by this way the highlights are being spread out in one direction as you can see here and the other example is in these silver caps we have the micro scratches being placed in a circular fashion and this way we get these kind of like very interesting distortions in our highlights so we're going to be working on those two different shaders additionally on my patreon you can find a bonus video on how to create this procedural welding effect you can also find all of the scene files over there Let's first work on this much more simplified object in here. And the idea for now is to just use bump maps in order to add scratches to the surface. And this way would follow basically how it's done in reality or real life that we have like surface imperfections that create these kind of like highlight distortions. So in order to add scratches, those would need to be texture based. That's why I have to add two different UV maps. One is a cylindrical UV map that just uses a map channel of one and that is responsible for the side here of our object. And then I have this additional UV map, which is a planar UV and that has a map channel of two and is responsible here for the cap part of our object. The whole object also uses two different material IDs in order to use a multi sub object shader for it. ID one is for the side and then ID two is for the top of our object. So let's first work on the side of this shader and for this I prepared this very simple texture map and as you can see it's just some random scratches that go from left to right. And now we're just gonna connect this texture map into our shader and that is just a very basic metallic shader for now. So you can see the metalness is set to 1 and everything else is pretty much left to default. So now let's connect this V-Ray bitmap through a V-Ray color to bump node into our bump map of this material and then also make sure that this bump map intensity is set to 100 and then we can use this height parameter here to define the intensity of our bump map. You can see at the moment it is very very strong but we already get this effect that these highlights are being spread out in one direction. Let's go a little bit less for example 0.25. Now as you can see if you see this highlight here for example if I make the intensity to zero then you can see this part here is being spread out in one direction and the highlight starts to grow into this one direction basically. Let's now try to do the same thing for the cap here and for this I have this kind of texture map as you can see if I zoom in then this has all of these kind of like circles in here and we're going to use that in order to create hopefully these kind of highlights on the top and then we're just going to connect that also through a V-Ray color to bump node and then connect this color to bump node into the bump slot in here. Make sure that this intensity is at 100. You can see something is already happening in here, but let's go for example with a little bit lower volume. Then you can see we have kind of these distortions here starting to appear by just using bump maps in our shader. So the idea to use bump maps seems to work to a certain degree, but in reality this kind of setup here has a lot of issues and you will see that, for example, if you start to zoom in, we have all of these like really, really horrible distortions in here. And also we have like the highlight, which is not really spreading out all the way across the surface. If I need to have this highlight spread out more, I would need to go up with the intensity. You can see now this highlight tends to spread out a bit more, but it's also kind of disappearing. At the same time, we also start to introduce this very, very heavy scratch pattern, which we don't really want. We also have some kind of like shading issues. As you can see here, the highlight is being cut off. So in practice, in a render engine, getting this kind of effect by using bump maps alone is a not at all recommended approach. And luckily in V-Ray, there's a much smarter approach in order to do this, which also renders much more efficient. So let's now check out how the right way to add these kind of like effects would be done. Let's first disable here the bump maps for both shaders so that we go back to how we were before. And then let's see how we can 
use the anisotrophy parameters here in the BRDF settings in order to distort our highlights in a way that looks much more pleasing and much more realistic. So for this, let's work on a slightly more complex object, but it is set up exactly the same way like our cylinder before. So it uses the same kind of UV channels, the same kind of material IDs and so on. So now in the BRDF tab of our shader, we have access to this anisotrophy value. And this goes from plus one to minus one and the default or no anisotrophy is being zero. So let's choose, for example, a value of 0.6. And then we can see nothing really seems to happen. And that's because the anisotrophy heavily depends on the glossiness of our shader. So let's choose a glossiness of 0.6, for example. Then we can see if we check this small sample in here, the highlights are now going from left to right. And with this rotation, we can rotate how the highlights are going. So now they go from top to bottom. And the same thing we could also achieve by doing a negative 0.6 anisotrophy and then the highlights would also go from top to bottom without using this rotation in here. So now if we check here our rendering, we can see that for the center cylinder, it seems to be working nicely. But for those two cylinders here, the result looks very weird. And that is because at the moment we're using this local axis. So if I select my object and I choose here the local axis, you can see the Z axis is the one pointing up, the X axis is this one here and the Y axis is this one. And at the moment, everything is based on this Z axis and you can only choose one axis, of course. So if I choose the Y axis, then this cylinder here is correct. And if I choose the X axis, then this cylinder here is correct and the other ones are wrong. So how can we solve now the issue that all the cylinders are displayed correctly? And this we can do by using the map channel that we assigned earlier to our cylinder. So if I just go here to choose the map channel, then we have here the correct result. And then with this rotation parameter, we can, for example, like change our rotation of the highlights for all of them together. In our case, the rotation here should be set to zero with this negative 0.6 anisotrophy. And then we will get a correct result here for our cylinders. So now we have this kind of nice streaky effect going on correctly on all of our cylinders. But what is a little bit missing at the moment is this kind of like scratchy effect. So everything is very, very perfect. We don't get any kind of scratch pattern here going on. So for this, we can just bring back our bump map. And once I do that, now the intensity of course is way too strong because that uses still the previous workflow that I showed you earlier. And now we can just choose a much lower intensity, for example, 0.15. And then you will get these kind of very nice streaky highlights, but we're also blending in a tiny bit of our bump map. And like this way, we get these kind of like scratchy patterns here going on. And that kind of tells the story why those highlights are streaked like this way. So I think like this is a kind of hybrid approach. You use the anisotrophy in order to distort the highlights. And then you use a little bit of bump map in order to bring back these kind of scratchy patterns here on the surface. So now we still need to work on the caps for our object. And there we have these kind of like circular scratch patterns. And in order to achieve this, we're also going to use the anisotrophy again. So let's choose a value of 0.6, for example, and then also go lower with the glossiness. Once you do that, you see there's some kind of effect. But at the moment, we have like different kind of result for each axis again, because we use the local axis again. So now we need to use the map channel and then there we need to use the correct map channel and that in our case is the map channel 2 because that's this planar map that we applied here on all of those caps that was using the map channel 2. So now all of them are the same and now the only thing we need to do is to map something here into the rotation because by default the rotation or the angle of these highlights is only going in one direction but here we have basically this kind of like circular scratch pattern so what we need to do is to map here a gradient ramp into this rotation value then also make sure that this gradient ramp here uses a map channel of two in order to fit our uv map and then we just need to use a spiral here so once i open this you can see we have like a gradient from black to white, just one time wrapping here completely around. And then this way you get these kind of very nice circular highlights here on those cap parts. 
So now using the hybrid approach from before, we can also just bring back our bump map. And of course the intensity now probably is also way too strong. So let's just use a value much smaller, for example, 0.025. Then once we zoom in, for example, we can see that we have some kind of like scratch pattern here. At the moment, I think it's still not correct. We probably would need to go down with the filter multiplier here to a value of 0.01. Then we can see here this kind of pattern on the top that is only visible once we approach it very closely. But if we go further away, we can see that we only get these kind of like nice streaky effect here going on. So there you have it. That's how you build the two most commonly used brushed metal shaders. One with these like kind of circular pattern and one with these kind of linear scratch pattern. We still have a tiny bit of an issue as you can see here on the edges where they don't really blend together very nicely. What I did personally was to add like this kind of procedural world seams in here. And you can check out some bonus video in my Patreon if you're interested in that. They are fully procedural and if you add like new kind of geometry, they will also automatically update. So head on over there if you're interested in that. Other than that, you can also see that the same kind of approach can be used for much more complicated objects. So here I just use exactly the same kind of shader for a much more complicated object. And it also works quite nicely in this one. So that concludes this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if that was helpful for you. If you have any further questions, I normally tend to answer all of my comments. And other than that, see you in the next one and take care. Bye.